Let's say I want to draw out and animate a big fat arrow swooping across my map here. Well, it's quite easy with GeoLayers 3. So up here in the top right hand corner of the panel, there's actually a button called Draw Arrow. So if I click on this, this is going to add a new shape layer, and you'll see there's a little segment here with an arrowhead at the center of my composition. You'll also notice that the pen tool has been automatically activated. So this will allow me to quickly draw out a path. So if I click and drag, it's going to add new segments and create this path. And this path is actually an arrow. You can't really see it because it's this green color. So when you draw an arrow, it's going to pull the color from whatever layer style you have selected. Right now, mine is green. So to change this, just click on the arrow and then go over to the Effect Controls panel and you have your colors here. So you can just change it to whatever you want right here. Now you can also see there's a plethora of all these different parameters. I'm going to let you do, you know, do a deep dive on this in your own time because this would just make the tutorial super, super long. And that's half the fun is playing around and customizing your arrow. But if we come here and take a look at this, if I have this selected, what's so cool about this is now if I come over to the map and start to change the pitch and uh, the bearing, this arrow automatically follows along. Not only that, it's automatically animated. So it has this trim path applied which is way, way too fast. So if you click on this and hit the U key, you can see the keyframes. I'm gonna grab this in keyframe and move it to the end here. So now we have this nice little four second animation of the arrow flying across. Very, very cool. Let's say I wanna customize this and change the position of the arrow. Well, it's really easy. So I'm gonna go here, grab the shape layer, and then just hit the G key, which is gonna show you these segments and these paths, or the vertices in the segments. So simply click on one, and now you can start to move it. Now this activates the pen tool again, so just be careful if you grab the endpoint and you accidentally click on the first point again, you can actually close this path. So to avoid doing that, switch over to the selection tool. I can move this and it will automatically follow with a map and stick to it. Even if I change the pitch and the bearing again, the arrow will always stay here. So let's say I actually want this to, I want this arrow to go from Spain and then kind of loop and twist and turn across the continent here, all the way over here. So I actually only need two vertices and I'll just play with these Bezier handles like this. So I'm gonna twist this Bezier handle down here. Now I'm gonna grab the first segment here, or this, the first vertice, sorry. And actually there's no Bezier handle here. So to switch that, I'm gonna click and hold on the pin tool and then just select this convert vertex tool and click on that and that'll give me that Bezier handle. And I'm gonna switch back to the selection tool by hitting the V key and then I'm just gonna bring this up here. All right, very cool. So now I have this arrow animating across. Now I want to adjust my map view and have it focus up on the position of the arrow. Not only that, I want to have it animate along the path of this arrow. Well, this is really simple, but what I first need to do is turn this arrow into a geo-referenced map feature. That's going to allow me to utilize all the automation tools inside of the GeoLayers panel, of which there are many. So first I'm going to just reset the rotation of this so we can see what we've got going on here. To create a map feature or a geo-referenced map feature from a shape layer, just select the shape layer and then go click on this little plus button here and then do feature from layer. This is going to automatically create this new map feature here. If you open it up, it gives you both the arrowhead shape and the arrow line. I just want the arrow line. So if I double click on this, what that does, it's just a quick way to automatically center up the map view on whatever feature you want. Very great. But I actually want to animate this map and have the camera or the map view flying along with this. And not only that, I want it to to fly along with the arrowhead and also be like pivoting, the pitch and the bearing changes and all that. So what we can do is I can move the playhead to the beginning and then with this arrow line map feature selected, I'm gonna click on the fit view to feature. If you click on it, it opens up a few different options here. One of which says animate view along feature. There's even a little keyframe symbol here. So if you click on that, it's gonna ask you, hey homeboy, how long should the animation take? Five seconds is good because that's the length of my actual composition here. When I click on OK, it's going to paste keyframes from basically from the start of the playhead here. So if I go back now, let's just see what we got. Oh yeah, very, very cool. OK, it's still looking a little flat, this top-down view. So I want to add a little bit more life to this animation. So if I click on the World Map Comp and hit the U key, you're going to see that only the latitude and the longitude have keyframes. So I want to add changes to the zoom, the bearing, and the pitch as well. So I'm going to bring my playhead back here. And you can just automatically add keyframes by clicking here, or you can just 
click the keyframe button again, and that will add keyframes to all of them. And then hit the U key again twice. Now you can see all of these new parameters. So just make sure that if you make changes, your playhead is over those keyframes. So now with this over the keyframes, I'm actually gonna zoom it in quite a bit. You can tweet, fine tune tweak it with this little slider here. And we'll do like a little bearing and pitch change. Just make sure you don't actually move the map around because you're gonna be moving the latitude and longitude. Now we'll bring the playhead to the end here. And if your map view doesn't update, you can actually disable the map comp view link right here and then re-enable it. And now you can just right click and drag to change this. Let's say the bearing goes all the way over here. Now let's just play this back and see what we got. We're gonna have some crazy movements. It's pretty cool. Now let's say I wanna add a little bit more life to it and make this arrow look a little bit more 3D. I'm gonna do a fake 3D. We're not gonna be going through all the crazy adding lights and shadows because a lot of those don't even work inside of GeoLayers. All I'm gonna do is simply duplicate this arrow then I'm gonna drag arrow two below here and I'm gonna click enter to rename it. I'll call it arrow shadow. And then I'm gonna to go to the effects and presets panel. So go to window and select effects and presets. And then in the keyword search, just search for the drop shadow effect, and then drag that and drop that on your arrow shadow. And down here, that's gonna add this new shadow right here. And it's important that you bring the distance to zero, otherwise it's gonna move around strangely. And also click on shadow only. That's gonna to totally deactivate the arrow shape. Now I'm gonna turn off this other arrow, so now we can see what we've got. You've got this shadow here. Now I can start to bump up the softness, I'm gonna turn the other arrow layer back on. Now the real secret to make this effect work is to grab the main arrow layer and then come over here, you can see your little 3D widget. Make sure you're set to local access mode and then grab the Z axis right here and just pull this up. Then you can raise this up off the map to whatever height you think works best. And here's a look at the final animation. Turned out quite well. So if you want to pick up the project files for this, they're available over on my Patreon page. Speaking of Patreon, a big shout out to my Tier 3 patrons. Thank you all so much for contributing and making this tutorial possible. So if you're a map nerd and you're watching this and you want to really benefit from this content, go check out my Patreon page or you can go check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass, which I put together earlier this year. There's a lot of cool content over there that you will enjoy. You can find links to everything down in the video description. Have a good one. See you next time.